Hi, I'm farmer Emily. We're at the Sierra Harvest Food Love Educational Farm. This is where thousands of Nevada County students come and learn where their food comes from. Follow me, we're gonna go meet farmer Sophie at the compost pile. Hi, I'm Sophie here at the Food Love Farm and this is our big old compost pile. Wanna check it out? How does it look, Sophie? Well, it's steamy. I want to see red wigglers. Let's see if we can find any. I today. see one right there. Where? Right there. Oh yeah, let's get it. So why would we compost? What's the point? Oh well, it's a great way to recycle materials like kitchen scraps and yard waste into food for our plants in the garden. Wonderful. Yeah. If you wanted to start a compost pile at home, first I'd pick where. So, you don't want it too close to your house or else critters or other things or even the potential stench could get in there. So I like to think, well, where does my yard waste go anyways? Probably somewhere near your garden or out back somewhere. So over here at Food Love, we have a pallet system, which pretty much means we have, let's see, four different stations of pallets, wood pallets that you can get for free pretty much anywhere. And we just nailed them together. Now, you could also buy one of those big plastic turners for a compost pile. That works great too. You could even, it's really just a way to have a contained space for your organic materials. It doesn't have to be fancy. Here at Food Love, we have one that's so big, we just put it right here on the ground and kind of shape it like a loaf. Next thing is you need your materials. So we separate them into browns and greens. So our carbons and our nitrogens. Browns are anything from straw, to wood chips, to anything that's already dead and kind of woody. Greens are more like weeds, fresh weeds, grass clippings, kitchen food waste. You can buy one of these compost um, bins from Briar Patch or another local store. They have a nice um, kind of smell filter so it's not so stinky on your kitchen table. I produce a lot more food scraps than that. So I just use a big five gallon bucket and that works great. Um, so these are really high in nitrogen. They're very green materials, wet, kind of stinky. Um, you could also use manure. If you have chickens, don't use cow, I mean, don't use dog or cat manure. That is not good for your compost pile. So you need a location and your materials. Now to think about size. In general, like three feet by three feet by three feet is a good measure. Here at Food Love, we're a bit bigger, so we can use a much larger compost pile. But if you want to do one at home, I think it's more digestible to do something like this. All right, so to start building your compost pile, I like to have two types of materials ready. Like I mentioned, the greens and the browns. And you find somewhere to go. So compost is all about layering. Green, brown, green, brown. It's not an exact science. It's okay, you just gotta start. So I always start with browns first. Sticks, you want lots of big sticky things that you wouldn't think would break down at the base. They will break down, but first they'll allow a lot of air flow to come up. Because just like any living thing, compost needs to breathe, right? So you can put down lots of sticks, um, anything you pick up around your property. It's not, you don't have to be precise. After you get that, I like to put some greens. So greens, like I said, could be weeds you just pulled, grass clippings, um, or scraps from your kitchen. Next, you do another layer of browns. Maybe it's straw you picked up at A to Z or Simply Country or some farm and garden supply store. Maybe it's pine needles you raked from last winter. Anything goes, that as long as it's brown and kind of woody. Next, I'd put a layer of greens. Greens, browns, greens, browns. And then to finish it off, I always like to cover it with a brown. So straw is a really great um, covering for your compost pile because it keeps in moisture. Just like I said, compost piles need to breathe. They also need to drink, so they need water. And straw really helps keep the water in. Maybe you have some cardboard laying around. You could put that on top. Anything to kind of seal in the moisture. And when you want to add to your compost pile, because you will always have kitchen scraps, right? You can just dig a hole in the top, just like so. You can dump your food scraps in and then just kind of tuck it back in, just like that. 
and the worms and the microbes in there will do the rest of the work. It's pretty easy. So there's a lot of debate on what you should put in your compost and what you shouldn't. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, a lot of people are concerned about the acidity of certain things like citrus peels, coffee grounds, avocado pits, like this one I just found right here, and avocado peels. So it's really up to you. Um, if you're really concerned about killing the worms because the acid can be harsh for them, maybe you want to lay off that for a while. But it's all just one grand experiment. Here at Food Love, we put in everything. We put everything from citrus peels to blackberry thorns to um, chicken bones because we see it as it's a greater ecosystem we're living in and all that stuff is natural anyways, so why can't it eventually break down? Now, if you're feeling a little bit nervous about that, don't do it. Just keep it off to the side, maybe uh, decompose it in another way and just build with what feels comfortable for you. You can always add in stuff later. Things that you really should avoid are anything that have toxic materials in them. So newspaper is fine, but magazines with like a glossy plastic coating are something you really want to avoid because that's inorganic. So just think organic or inorganic. If you live in an area where there's a lot of wild critters running around, maybe fish isn't the right thing because you don't want to attract raccoons and other um, animals like that in your compost pile. But it's really no hard science whether you should or shouldn't. It's all up to you. Don't be afraid, just try it out. All right, so the bugs in your compost pile. We love bugs. They help us decompose our pile. Without them, it would just stay a rotting pile of food, right? So we want bugs. Now, some bugs tell us things about our compost pile that we maybe don't want to have. Others are a really great sign. So I'll talk you through it a little bit. Red wigglers, those red wiggly worms in your pile are wonderful. They're a special kind of worm that really quickly um, composts organic materials and poops out these worm castings that are really high in nutrients for your compost pile. So if you see red wigglers, you're in good company. Now, if you're seeing a lot of ants crawling around, that might be a sign that your pile is too dry. What do you do? You give it a little water. Um, if you're seeing a lot of flies buzzing around, that might mean it's a little too wet and you might need to aerate it or turn it or fluff it up to get more airflow through because it could be a little too wet. Roly polies, uh, millipedes, slugs, all those things are great signs of a healthy compost pile and don't need to worry. Sometimes we think, oh, if we see it in the garden and it's a pest, it must be a pest in the compost pile. That's not true. We want as much life as possible happening in there. So don't be worried when you see all sorts of critters in your compost pile. If you want help building your compost pile at home, you can go to sierraharvest.org and sign up for a home garden consultation with me, Farmer Emily. <laughs> Stay tuned on the Sierra Harvest Facebook page or our website for updates on what's going to be happening this summer.